Hi, I'd like to show you today uh, how to do a cane that I'm calling mica mash. And uh, it's very simple to do and it uses uh, mica uh, clays. I'm using Primo clay. Uh, I would imagine it would work just as well with other brands. Um, makes beautiful, beautiful jewelry and you can do it in lots of different colors. This one was done with gold, uh, 18 karat gold and bright green pearl. And uh, this one is done like we do today with regular gold, 18 karat gold, magenta pearl, and uh, sunset pearl, the new uh, primo pearl color. So it makes beautiful jewelry, makes uh, nice for um, tableware, uh, barrettes, whatever you want to make with it. It's, it's just a gorgeous cane. So here are some other examples that I've done. This one was with the Sunset Pearl, the Magenta Pearl, and the Regular Pearl. And uh, this one was done with the Turquoise Pearl, um, the Regular Gold, and the Bright Green Pearl. And uh, this one is done simply with the uh, 18 Karat, and the Magenta, and the Sunset. So uh, here's some discs that I'm going to make into a three-disc necklace later on, and I'm going to show you how to assemble all these parts, uh, probably with sari ribbon, because I've been meaning to do that. So um, let's get started. So I'm going to use four colors today, uh, and just one section of each color. So this is the 18 karat gold, and I'll cut off one section and slice it into manageable size pieces for my pasta machine. So that'll get mixed up. And this is the Sunset Pearl. It's a gorgeous new color. Do that one. This is the 18 karat gold. The last um, cane I made, I didn't put the, uh, the regular gold, not the 18 karat, but the regular gold in it. Um, and I, I felt like the gold was getting a little bit lost, so this will help with that. And the magenta pearl. So now I'll just take a moment and mix up all those colors. So here are my colors mixed. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is cut the regular gold in half. And let's take them off my plastic here. So you want roughly the same size pieces. This cane is really forgiving so it doesn't um, it doesn't matter a whole lot um, you know how irregular your pieces are. So I'm just going to add the gold in between on both sides of the 18 karat gold. Give that a little roll together to make it stick. And then fold it directly in half. Roll it again. And then put it through the pasta machine. You want to maybe scrunch it up so it doesn't get too big. So put it put through the pasta machine 20-25 times until you got a nice blend. So I'll be back when my blend is finished. Okay, so that's about 20 times. Um, so now you're going to cut it into slices. And I'm going to go more or less a quarter of an inch. And you want your slices to contain all three of those colors, or four colors, whatever number of colors you used in the cane. And it doesn't have to be precise. Some can be thicker, or some can be thinner. Okay, 
And now we do the mash part. So you're going to take your slice and you're going to begin to twist it and fold it and on top of itself. Scrunch it up and then place it down. And each slice you're going to do like that and you're going to keep the orientation of the colors the same. So I'm going to fast forward through this part. So the property of mica clay is that it has little mica par particles and they line up as you're putting it through the pasta machine so that uh, um, they're all on the top surface and you get that shine. Now when you turn it this way, you have a very dull. So by twisting and turning this, you're encouraging the micas to, s some of them to be quite shiny, some of them to be quite dark. And uh, that's what gives this cane its unique uh, look. So then you take your big long mess of, of uh, clay. Actually you could probably stack it but I usually don't. Uh, and then I'm just going to start pressing it all together. And again you don't have to be precise. So my aim is to turn it into a square block, a cane. These colors are just gorgeous together. Okay, so that's pretty much done. So now when I go to slice it, I'm going to slice it in, in this direction so that I have all of those three colors. I've got that gold color running through the center here. And uh, we can make whatever we want out of it. So I'm going to let that rest a bit 
and uh, that's how you make the cane and then next we'll make something with it. Okay the cane is rested so it's cool and should be easier to slice so I'm going to take a few slices off of it So that's four slices. This one's too thick. We'll take another one. I'll just kind of squish them together. Then I'll put a piece of patty paper on top. And with um, these are uh, stainless steel odor neutralizers, I guess. You can buy them at uh, Amazon, different places. They're usually in the kitchen section. It's for getting rid of odors like onions and stuff like that on your hands. So I'm going to apply quite a bit of pressure and burnish those pieces together. Apply my paper. So after it's well stuck, then I'm going to take it to my pasta machine and I'm going to put it through um, this direction and then I'm going to turn it and put it through this direction. So I'll start on, a, on my thickest th setting move down to a two, a three, possibly a four um, until it, you get a pattern that you like and then that's going to be put onto um, a thickest setting of uh, a light colored clay. So I'll go and do that and I'll be right back. So I've actually taken that down to uh, a five out of nine settings so it's quite thin. my prepared thick white down and uh, make sure we can see as much of this as we can. Picked up a little bit of white from the pasta machine so I'll get rid of that. Okay, so now I'm going to put that piece of patty paper down back on top and I'm going to burnish these two layers together. The burnishing really helps eliminate those pesky little bubbles that sometimes show up after you bake. So make sure there's no trapped air in here. So that looks pretty good. So now I've got two cutters. I'm going to make a three disc necklace. So uh, I'm using one cutter that is a diameter of two inches. And the other one is slightly over an uh, uh, inch and a half. So 
inch and three quarters, something like that. So I'll find a pattern that I like. I know I want one with gold and all three colors in there. So before I do that, I'm going to put a piece of plastic over top of it so I get the rounded edges. Lift your plastic before you cut your second piece. So we can get one out of this side here. And then this one here. Save the rest of that veneer for another project. So then I'll just take a moment with my fingers, just smooth out those edges. They're pretty good after uh, cutting it with the plastic though. And then I'm going to put them on the bottom of a, a soda can that I cut uh, to make my dome shape. So here's three of them. So I'll center it as best I can over the dome and start pressing it trying to give equal attention to the four quarters of it and then I can sort of press everything in between. I want to press those edges down as best I can. And then to get as smooth a surface as you can, sometimes I'll use the heel of my hand and just kind of stroke over lightly. This will eliminate a lot of sanding. The more time you spend on smoothing these out before they're baked, the less time you're going to sp spend finishing. These beads really um, really do well with a high gloss finish on it. so. Use your favorite method if it's um, like a varathane gloss or liquid uh, clay, um, like Cato clay, or uh, hand sanding and polishing on a buffer, which is the method I usually use for this type of bead. Um, they look really be uh, at best with, uh, with a high gloss on it. So that one is pretty much done. Uh, I see a little tiny bubble there. So I'll take my paper again and apply a little pressure to that spot. Ah, see, that's a big bubble that has to be pierced. And when you pierce a spot with mica, it takes a little bit of playing with it to get it to totally disappear. So then I'll put the paper back over there and burnish it again. Now when I do these I usually will do more pieces than I want for my necklace. So if I'm wanting like three, uh, three disc necklace, I'm probably going to do three of the small ones and two of the large ones. So then I've got some options in case something like that happens. It, it's a bubble that you missed. And uh, sometimes you can press them out a little bit when it's still hot. 
but with mica I find they really show. So it's good to get those before. So that, that looks pretty good. I see a little spot there. So that looks pretty good. So I'm, I won't bore you and show you the same process over on the other discs. So I'm going to go ahead and bake those. Um, I like baking things longer than what's recommended. Uh, just make sure you have the right temperature. So I'll bake mine for an hour at uh, 275. And uh, when it's done, I'll be sanding and uh, buffing these. I don't have the equipment to show you my my station. It's not very well organized, but um, I'll leave that part up to you guys. And then after this, we'll uh, assemble the necklace. So uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, stay tuned and join me for the second part of this. And see you next time. Bye.